Hey, it's Greg Otten with MaritimeGardening.com. I thought I'd do a different kind of video today. I'm going to focus on a series of questions that uh, one of the viewers gave me. It was a good set of questions and it was about the, the Ruth Stout method and how to employ it in a garden and, and my experience with it and recommendations and so on and so forth and what, what you can do with it. So uh, let's get on to it. So the, the viewer is asking me, you know, because I did a video, a set of videos last year where I used the Ruth Stout method in, in my garden right here. Uh, I've changed the configuration since then, but and I used it to plant potatoes. And they, uh, so the person asked me, um, can you can you plant carrots? Can you plant onions and stuff like that? Does it only work for potatoes and so on and so forth? That's a really good question. So I would start by saying the way I employed it, I don't think there's a a huge range of, of things you can do. So what am I trying to say? The way I employed the Ruth Stout method is that I had grass like this, right? Weedy, grassy field type situation. And I mowed it down short and I put some horse manure on it and I jammed some potatoes in the horse manure and I put about a foot of uh, hay on top of that and that was the potato garden. And uh, so and the reason I did that is because it, it takes a season for the grass and the roots and the grass and all, all the stuff. You know, if you're not going to till the ground up, uh, it's going to take at least a season for the soil that's in the sod to, you know, to, to, be, to be workable. Well, what am I trying to say? And I think I showed some of this in the follow-up videos. Um, the roots of this grass, of this sod, right? If you kill the grass, you know, if you put a bunch of stuff over it and kill it, uh, it's going to rot. And eventually, once it rots, all that root structure and all that fiber and all that stuff that's sort of holding the soil in place is going to break down. And so after that process is complete, the soil that's, you know, I would say, if I start starting from right here, right, you get, you know, I think I showed this in the video, the first five, four or five inches below the surface, below grade, become quite soft and quite workable. Right? Whatever's beneath that's going to be still fairly hard um, because there was no roots in it. And, right? This part of the soil is, a, you know, if you, if you take a clump of sod out, you basically get roots going down about this far. So if you kill that plant and all the roots rot, all of that becomes fairly soft. Now I think about Ruth Stout's garden, I mean, and it's a general no-till approach where she just put hay on it every year and I put different kinds of mulches on every year and that's exactly what I do here. But for years before she did that, she tilled her garden, right? Same if you watch uh, Back to Eden film, Paul Gauchy. Uh, he doesn't till his garden, but for years he did, <laughs> right? So, you know, for years he was tilling the garden, and then uh, he uh, stopped doing it. Uh, so, if you want to use the Ruth Stout method, or any, any of these sort of like adding mulch methods, uh, bear in mind that it's going to take a number of, uh, it's going to take a while if you're just adding mulch for the soil to actually get soft that's underneath that mulch. So, and I think I did a podcast on this once, I think the title was It's Okay to Till in Year One. Right, if you want to kickstart everything, till it all up, plant what you want to plant, then put a mulch on top and don't till it anymore, right? If you're going from zero to garden, <laughs> right? Uh, why, you know, if, if you want to speed things up and you've got the time and the resources and so on and so, on and so forth, do that. Um, these gardens, uh, the year I did a Ruth Stout garden here, it was very late in the season. I didn't have a lot of time to mess around with and I wanted to start converting the soil here into garden soil. And so I have found that when you're planting potatoes, it's a really good way to do that. You can take just, just weedy stuff like this and if you put about six inches of soil down, no matter what, I used horse manure just because I can get it for free. And horse manure, of all the manures, is about the weakest one you can get in terms of nutrients. So if it's been aged, you can use it just like soil. So I use horse manure, and I didn't use any this year, but in previous years and where I've built gardens and stuff like that, I have used horse manure as a soil because I can get it for nothing. There's a horse uh, stable just down the road here, and, and they're nice, and they, 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 they let me take manure. Um, if you can't get it aged, get it this time of year, in the fall, and throw it on where you want your gardens to be and just leave it there all winter. 
right? And the rain and the snow and, and the season and all that sort of stuff. Will, and, and, or if you're in a place where you don't get snow and rain, it's warm all winter long. You know, it'll just work away, right? It, it'll compost itself over time, right? So get it now and put it put it where you want the garden to be, and uh, it'll be aged by next spring <laughs> when you want to grow a garden. So it's another way to sort of get around. You know, where do I find aged horse manure? Well, just get relatively fresh horse manure and, and put it where you want it to go and don't plant anything and just leave it for a while and it'll age it'll age in place sort of thing right um, so where am I going with all this if you've got a space and you don't want to take a rototiller to it and you want sort of like uh, time and nature and organisms to uh, turn that soil uh, the existing soil like like I've got I keep, I keep touching the ground here like just just weeds and grass and stuff right if you want that to become nice lot soft loose soil it's going to take at least a season under mulches and stuff like that for that to happen and there's only so many things you can plant where that works right potatoes work great because you can put a big heavy mulch on top and the potatoes got lots of room to grow and they get what they need another thing you can plant uh, if you're just putting like uh, like a horse manure right on top of grass like that as long as you get it about six inches deep is you can plant uh, things that don't go down, right? So you can plant things like um, squash, pumpkins, tomatoes, things like that, right? The roots only go so far down, they'll be fine. Uh, for a thing like a carrot, I would want to see, wait a season before I plant a carrot so that I get a nice, maybe nine inches of, of loose soil underneath the very top, right? So the carrots can go down and get in there. I've read lots of um, uh, I've even seen people talking about this on uh, YouTube, and uh, I'm, sh I'm sure there's some logic to it, talking about, well, I plant root vegetables to loosen up the soil. And maybe that happens, but in the process you get crappy, short, stumpy carrots, <laughs> right? So I'm sure those stumpy carrots are doing some good there, you know, working their way in. Um, but, uh, you know, if the soil is really, you know, like my soil here, the existing soil, it's all stiff clay. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you just... You know, if you're letting like carrots do the work, you're just going to get lousy carrots. Uh, so I find something like a potato, which is kind of growing on top of the soil, right? The, the grass and everything is, is breaking down. And, uh, you know, that rotting process and so on feeds the potato plant. And the potatoes are just growing, they're growing on top of the grass, right? But during that process, the grass is dying and it's rotting. And, uh, well, you know, whatever microorganisms are in the soil, they're metabolizing all of that. And you're turning that top, you know, four or five inches, whatever, of sod and the roots and all that stuff. That's all going to become this nice loose stuff. Um, so, you know, if you're not going to rototill the this, this space, then plant something like a potato or something that's sort of growing up, right? And uh, wait a season before you plant things that are trying to go down, like a carrot. Uh, Depending on what kind of stuff you have on top, you, you could plant, uh, the person was asking me about onions, as long as it's a well-aged uh, horse manure, onions will do fine. Um, another thing you can do, if you have the time and the energy and so on, is like I've shown previously in this garden, uh, you, you dig up the sod, and you dig up the stuff underneath the sod, and you put some rotten logs down, right, the hoga culture method, right, then you put the sod down, and you put the soil that was underneath the sod, on top. So you're just rearranging the strata sort of thing and you put mulches over that. Um, but by doing that you've got some some decent soil on top and all the other stuff that's underneath is, is just slowly rotting away and the the worms and all that other stuff is redistributing the nutrients throughout the soil. Right? And that's a good good way to sort of use what's there without buying anything if you can get you know old rotten stuff. You don't have to use rotten logs you can use rotten anything right? Um, but that's the hoga culture, the classic method is uh, to use logs and make these mounds. It doesn't have to be, a, I know I've, I've had people comment, that's not a mound. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a mound. You're just using the principle, right? The rotten stuff underneath, good stuff on top. The rotten stuff holds water and uh, captures nutrients and feeds the organisms in the soil. And all of that benefits the plants that are growing on top. That's the general principle. There's lots of different ways you can get there. And I'm, I know I'm oversimplifying it, but... Uh, I don't like overcomplicating things that don't need to be complicated, <laughs> right? Um, if you've got uh, lots of space and you want to rent a rototiller for a day and you're going from just field like this to garden, 
Uh, I, you know, if I was moving from this property to another property and I had a big field and it was this time of year and I wanted a big garden next year, I would till the whole thing. I wouldn't ever till it again because you don't need to, but they get started, hell yeah, I'd, t I'd till it. <laughs> you know, wh why wait, right? It, it just gets everything happening a lot faster. You're not going to destroy the ecosystem with one tilling session, okay? Because all these gurus you're following, they tilled their garden for years and then they stopped and the world didn't end, right? Um, by tilling it, you're just loosening it up a lot quicker, right? But you don't need to till it once, you know, once you get to that point. I haven't tilled anything here for years. You don't need to, right? But if you're going, if you think about these hoga culture beds that I've built, I'm basically tilling the soil initially, right? And taking all the stuff and turning it over and moving it all around, right? That's basically tilling it. It's almost like a, a double, double dig, if, if you know that technique. Um, but then you don't need to keep doing that year after year after year. Once you've done that once, you've basically reset the whole thing and turned it into a garden. You just keep adding mulches and it'll stay loose and soft and uh, you'll have, have beautiful soil. So I know that's kind of a rambling sort of answer, but uh, there's no one answer, right? Um, if you want a ton of potatoes and you don't want to put a lot of energy into turning that property into a garden, just plant a whole bunch of potatoes that year. Or plant a bunch of things that are going to grow up, right? underneath some 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 you know manure and a whole bunch of mulch and uh, if you want uh, if you want some carrots maybe take uh, you know a, fra a fraction of the space and if you don't want to rent a rototiller or whatever take a fraction of a space and make it into a hogoculture bed plant your carrots there right um, you don't have to do everything one way there can be different areas that you take different approaches to get uh, different results depending on what you're trying to plant, right? If you have a plant that wants to go down, like a parsnip or a carrot, then you got to have some nice loose soil. And if you have a plant that's just sort of going up, right, the, red, the roots spread out and the plant goes up, then, you know, just put down some, you know, about six inches of nutrient-rich stuff and, you know, uh, plant in it. And just let the organisms in the soil take care, every, you know, all of that weed and grass and stuff will die and it'll eventually become loose soil. And when I say nutrient-rich stuff, I'm, I'm talking about really good organic soil or horse manure. Uh, and I, generally speaking, I don't like the idea of buying organic soil or, uh, or you know, that sort of thing because it just came from somewhere else. It's, it's not the most um, sustainable thing to do, right? You're just stripping good soil from somewhere else and putting it on your property. Uh, I like the idea of using horse manure because um, someone fed a horse for whatever reason, but at least you're turning what resulted from that <laughs> into a nice garden, and it, it's fairly weak. You can't just use any old manure, because uh, most uh, manures, uh, with the exception of horse manure, they're very strong. So if you're going to use a cow manure, or a pig manure, or a chicken manure, or something like that, you know, each of, the, each of those manures are stronger than horse manure. And so, uh, they all have to be tilled in, and depending on which kind you use, you can only use so much. A chicken manure is an extra incredibly strong manure, right? If I was going to, if I had a piece of, um, I haven't used chicken, garden here, uh, chicken manure here for a couple of years, but if I had a piece of land that I wanted to put chicken manure on, I'd only put like an inch on, and then I'd work it into the soil, because uh, it's a very strong uh, manure. Unless I was putting it on this time of year, fall, because i got nothing growing here, I'd just throw some on top and let it sort itself off over the winter, right? Once you get to that, that nice point where you've got a good no-till garden, you just throw things on top and around this time of year and let let it every, let everything just work itself out over the course of the uh, the winter and the downtime, right? And uh, the following year, everything will be ready to go and everything is just sort of distributed for you, right? Let gravity, let the wind, let the rain do all the work. Uh, what was the other question? So, uh, what to plant? How to get it all going? Uh, cow versus pig versus horse manure, yeah. If, if you're going to just use manure as a soil substitute, just use the horse manure and make sure it's aged. Uh, anything else you got to work it in. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, he was asking me how I planted the um, potatoes. Uh, I just jammed them in about, you know, so I put about six inches of manure, uh, manure on the soil, or I put six inches of manure when I did the roost out guards here. I put about six inches of manure on top of the grass, and the potatoes are basically sitting on the grass, right? The manure is above them, and then the, the mulch was on top of that. Uh, from everything I've read, um, 
you get the best results with a potato if it's about six to eight inches underneath grade, right? And then you have mulch on top. There's no need for any of that hilling or any of that other stuff. If you've got a really good mulch on the top of a potato, you don't need to hill it at all. But I've, I've seen people just throw potatoes on the ground and put hay over top of them. Personally, I've had better results sticking them in the ground and putting the hay over top of the whole thing. Uh, I've, I've tried planting them just on the ground and throwing hay over top of them. And you got to have a lot of hay over top of them. Like, you know, even with a foot, I found some of them turned green. Um, so you got to have a lot of mulch on top of there. Um, whereas if they're in the ground a bit, there's less of a risk of them turning green. And that's only if you're, if you're not going to do anything through the course of the season. I mean, the way I like to plant potatoes is you put them in the ground. And then, you know, two, three months later, you, you pick them. <laughs> and you don't do anything in between. That's the way I like to do it. And I have found if you stick them in the soil a little bit, six to eight inches deep, um, you don't need to uh, do anything at all. Uh, you don't need to add extra layers. You know, once you've planted them and put your mulch on, you don't need to add anything more. No watering, no mulching, no nothing. You just leave them alone. They take care of themselves. That's what I've found anyway. So that, that's the way I like to do it. Um, the final question was, uh, what varieties of potato do I like to plant? And uh, I don't have an incredible, you know, I'm not a, a fashion gardener. I don't plant all kinds of different varieties. Uh, you know, I, 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 I kind of stick with what uh, tastes good and seems to work. I, I seem to have a, a potato scab problem in this garden, no matter where I plant. I have a, a space over here where I planted in virgin soil this year. I got. You know, I got potatoes from a, from a local place here, not, not my sponsor of SCCs, but a local place here which sells certified potatoes, certified seed potato. I think they were the superior variety. And I stuck them in virgin soil. Soil has never been, as far as I know, never had anything grown in it before. And uh, they all have scab. <laughs> so either the ones I got from the provider had scab or it was, just, it was just here. It's just a thing. So it seems like no matter where I plant here, I get scab. Um, it could be that my soil is alkaline, I don't know. This soil has never been, I, I see no reason to think the soil, I haven't had it tested, but there's no reason to think the soil is alkaline. I'm, I'm motioning because this is where I planted them right here. Because nothing's ever been grown here. I've never treated the soil here with anything. And in this part of the world, because of acid rain and stuff, everything's acidic. Right? The Maritimes, the soils are acidic. They're, they're pathologically acidic here. So, uh, you know, it'd be, I guess, worth doing the test. Um, but, uh, you know, I doubt they're neutral. If they're anything, they're on the acidic side, and that's supposed to be good for potatoes, and it's supposed to help uh, mitigate potato scab. Um, but yeah, I got got. So where am I going with all this? Certain varieties of potato are more resistant to potato scab, and those are the kinds I tend to plant. I've, 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 and like that that variety I planted here is superior. They're not resistant to potato scab. I just like the way they taste, but they're not. And they all get scab. So I like to plant Russet Burbank, Kennebec, and Red Norland. Those are the ones I have found in my experience are fairly resistant um, to scab. I've had good results with them with regard to scab being sort of relatively scab free or at least not as bad as other varieties. Uh, and anyone listening to this, if they've had problems with scab, and I don't want to put sulfur and all that stuff in my soil, I just, I'd rather just get a variety that's resistant to scab. Um, if anyone's got a variety they want to suggest to me, right, that, that's get a good yield and, and the scab resistant, I'm all ears, please let me know. I, I'm always willing to try something new. Um, but that's what uh, I've had success with here, where scab's a problem. Russet Burbank, Kennebec, Red Norland. I had my best results, results with them. I tried Red Chieftain this year. I didn't find they were as resistant as the uh, Red Norlands. Not, they seem very similar on potato, but uh, the uh, chieftains seem to get a bit more scab than the uh, Red Norlands. I don't know why that is. It could have just been the locations. I'm not, not exactly sure. Anyway, that just about does it. Uh, sorry I didn't do a lot of videos this weekend. It was pouring rain. Uh, I actually didn't think I'd get out to film anything today because it was just so intense. Um, but uh, it seems to have calmed down a little bit. A little bit of wind, but it's not that bad. Uh, so I was able to get outside a bit today. So not a lot of videos this week. Sorry about that, but that's just what happens sometimes. Uh, I hope that uh, was useful and gave you some uh, useful tidbits there. I mean, they're kind of pulling in a lot of different uh, comments I've made in previous videos and, and hints of things. They're bringing that all together in just one, one video with, with just me talking. <laughs> so I, I hope that was informative. I just wanted to answer the question. I thought it was a good set of questions. Um, please, uh, if you've got any more questions, put them in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed this content, please, please like, share, subscribe. 
and check out my podcast, maritimegrounding.com. Until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.